Oh. Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Turn Cycling YouTube channel. Today we have another unboxing video. We're going to be unboxing the Topeak Joe Blow Charge. I don't know, what is this? What is this one? It is the Joe Blow Booster. There we go, the Joe Blow Booster Track Pump. Now, before we get into this, a couple of things to cover. First of all, everybody should have a track pump. It is such, makes it so much easier to blow your tires up to the right pressure all the time uh, if you have a decent track pump. So if you haven't got one, then definitely it's a worthwhile investment. Get one with a good uh, pressure gauge on it. You know what a stickler I am for getting your pressures right on your tires. Now, second thing to say is a quick word about tubeless because this is kind of partly the reason why I've got this particular track pump today uh, that we're gonna be unboxing. In my mind, there's been three things that have had the most practical impact on my riding in the last uh, four years, I would say, yeah, four years, and, and probably had the biggest impact on most people's general day-to-day -day riding. Yes, frames are getting lighter and a bit stiffer, but that really doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Uh, the, the three things that really make a difference in my mind are hydraulic brakes. Once you've done hydraulic discs, you just, you don't go back to any other form of braking. Uh, the next one is electronics. Whether you're talking DI2 or, uh, or ETAP, I switched to DI2 just over two years ago, and it's, it's just transformational in riding a bike, especially when we're talking about ultra racing. Uh, but the third one, uh, which I've been running for four years now, is tubeless tires. I started with tubeless four years ago, and I would not go back at all. Tubeless is it's, it's just amazing. Two reasons. One, punctures, whilst they don't become a thing of the past, I probably have a fifth less punctures, or, or maybe even more than that, running tubeless. I think so far I've raced 10 ultra races for a total of, uh, if I do some quick maths, probably somewhere in the region of 16,000 kilometers of, of racing, and I've had one puncture, and or one issue with tubeless, and that was because the sealant had dried out, uh, not because it got a hole that it couldn't seal. So, uh, and I'll take that, and you know, in 16,000 kilometers, is that right? 16,000 kilometers of riding? Uh, I will take that, that's just, it's, that's an amazing, uh, amazing result. Um, and secondly, Tubeless tires, are, they're just, they're nicer to ride. You can run lower pressures uh, without a risk of having a blowout. Go check out the research. There's a lot of research that shows most people are running their tire pressures too hard. Running lower pressures can increase comfort and it can increase speed. So, um, but you can't do that if you've got inner tubes. You know, I run 35 mil tires at uh, about 39 PSI. If I was running inner tubes and I was riding off-road, then there'd be a big chance that I'd have an impact puncture. Running tubeless, this is not a worry. So that being said, tubeless does have a little bit of a learning curve. I'll never forget the first time I tried to change a tubeless tire and I spent an hour messing around with sealant and with inflators, gas cartridges, uh, before I ran to the bike shop like half an hour before it was due to shut saying please can you seat my tubeless tire so you know there are uh th there are some learning points to to get to grips with in terms of fitting maintaining uh tubeless tires uh two big tips for that are if you're ever struggling to seat a tire put in new rim tape because new rim tape sits quite high on the rim and it helps provide an easier seal when you're first inflating the tire. Uh, now the second big tip for working with tubeless is to get some form of high pressure inflation device. So, you know, you, you might have seen these canisters which you pump up and they will very quickly put a large volume of air into your tire which allows it to seat. Some people do this with uh, gas cartridges, but that can freeze the sealant and you can often freeze your hands to it as well. Um, I have a uh, Schwalbe one. You basically attach it to another pump and you pump it up to 160 PSI, attach it onto the valve, flip the valve on the, on the inflation device, boom, tire inflates, take it off, take the valve, uh, put the valve core back in, pump it up because you've got a seated 
uh, tubeless tire on there. So, you know, that's what I've been using with this specialized one. But when that kind of gave up the ghost and I needed to get a new one, I thought I would get an all-in-one track pump and inflator. Quick bit of research suggested that uh, the Joe Blow booster was, was the best one to buy. Now, it's not cheap. Uh, it was a hundred pounds on Amazon, uh, which I think is a lot for a track pump, uh, although not as much as the Silka one, which wasn't even a tubeless inflator, and that was 275 pounds, uh, which even makes a hundred pounds on my Bluetooth one look cheap. So yeah, so we've gone with the internet's recommendations and we have bought the, uh, the Topeak Joe Blow Booster. Now, I am gonna be interested to see what this is like. I, I've seen quite a lot of people using Joe Blow track pumps and I was never that big a fan, uh, but the people we're staying with at the moment, they've got two of them and actually they're quite good. Uh, Laura gets on really, really well with it and, and finds it quite easy. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. And um, yeah, apparently all aluminium construction should be good. Should we get on with the unboxing? Let's do that. My unboxing knife. And we're not just gonna unbox it, we're gonna unbox it and then I'm gonna take you through the messy process of putting a new set of tires onto my wheels. Don't need that. Don't need that. Whoa. Don't need that. Now, that is a weighty bit of kit. Don't need that. Okay, so this feels solid. This is not a lightweight plastic track pump at all. This is a heavy bit of kit. It looks like it's got a real solid weight to it, solid base to it. This could be fun. Instructions, we will hang on to those. Um, because this will tell us how to flip between the two different modes. So yeah, in general, when you've got the charging bit, so we've got, to try and explain this, uh, this is where the normal leather cup will go up and down to put the air through. And then it will have a couple of modes. One, oh, I can't even figure it out. Okay, second really good observation. That is a long hose, um, which is great. There's nothing worse than having too short a hose and you've got to turn the wheel round. Uh, and sometimes you're trying to seat a tubeless tire and you're a little bit worried that it might blow off the rim. So you can always hide it around the corner if the hose is long enough. It's a clip fit. For anyone who's used one of the Lazine screw-on things that then pulls the valve core out, causing all kinds of trouble, then you'll know that this is a uh, much better weight forwards. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a smart head, so we probably just, it will work seamlessly between Presta and Schrader valves. Not that, who uses Schrader? I don't know. Um, now, the way this works with a, uh, with a tubeless setup, uh, with non-tubeless, this just passes straight through, that inflates and we inflate everything up. For tubeless, what you do is you flip this lever at the top here, like this, uh, and what that will do is that charges up this canister first of all, charge that to 160 PSI, and then you flip a button, whether you press that or press that, and that will then force the air in super fast, seating your tubeless tire. Right, let's go and fit some tires. I'm, I'm not gonna make this how to fit a tubeless tire. There are so many good explanations of how to do that uh, on the internet. So go check that out uh, if you wanna learn how to do this from scratch. Um, just a few tips from me. Uh, as I said earlier in the video, if you are struggling, then always try fitting new rim tape because the rim tape will sit, when it's new, it sits quite high from the rim and it just helps create a seal so that the air doesn't escape when you're trying to force it in and uh, seat the tube to start with. Uh, second tip is if you're uh, between sizes of rim tape or if you're unsure of what size to get, then you know go up a size or two or, or get it slightly wider than the, the width of your rim because 
as the rim tape gets pressed down by the pressure, it can start to pull away from the side. And that's what creates gaps that the air escapes from. So these are, I think, 20, 21 mil internal width and I've fitted 25 mil rim tape. Um, I have tried 21 in the past, but generally there I have to double tape it and try and do one tape round one side, the next tape round the next side. So it's a bit of a faff, so get, uh, get larger if you can. Uh, right. Um, yeah, next tip, kind of linked to why this is taking me longer than I thought, is uh, I, I inflate and seat the tyres without the, uh, the valve coring. Uh, that allows the air to go in really, really quick, especially if you're using something like the Topeak here uh, with a, an inflation chamber or with a, a, a high volume chamber. Um, you want that air to go in as quickly as you can so you can seat the tyre as quickly as possible. So yeah, I take the valve out, get the tyre seated, carefully deflate and take it off and then put the valve back in and uh, pump it back up. And if you're careful, then the bead doesn't pop off the, the rim. Uh, yeah, right, let's give this a go. See how it works. I've got two tires, both a fit new rim tape. I've taken the valves out. I've put the uh, tires on through most of it. What I tend to do is uh, put the tires on, leave a gap, put some sealant in, close it off, blow it up, hope it seats and then uh, slowly take it off and put the valve core back in. So uh, let's see how this pump does. I don't have a measuring tool, so I'm gonna be a little bit approximate with the, uh, with the sealant today. Now, one of the good things about tubeless is you can be a lot less worried about pinching a tire an inner tube. In fact, you can completely ignore pinching an inner tube, which is good. So let's start by putting this to charge mode. I want to get this up to 160. Without getting too hot and sweaty. Okay, done. Okay, moment of truth. I wonder if this is one where, right, well, let's give this a go. Might not work. Well, Okay, so two observations there. Firstly, successfully seated tire, um, but I think clearly the, the valve here is designed to sit with the valve core in place. So uh, let's check that out and see, see if that's correct or not. Um, but obviously we've got this one on, seated, no issues there. So I'm just gonna Screw the valve core back in. The bead didn't pop off when the air pressure came out, which is good. Hmm. I am. Done. Easy. There we go, simple, done. Um, 32 mil tires, I've got those pumped up to uh, 50 PSI. Should give me a nice, comfortable ride. Plenty of grip, and uh, yeah, ah, easy enough. Uh, now, right, with the next one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try inflating it with the valve core in place. Now, if the valve core in place works, then that's one stage less that you need to do when you're sorting these out with uh, tubeless tires. Screw the valve in. Close off the tire. Put this back to charge mode. Done. There we go. Get the sealant all around. Connect that. 
<laughs> Moments of truth. Perfect, I cannot argue with that. So, <coughs> that's held 50 PSI in the tire with the valve on, it's all seated. I always then just check around the rim, just make sure the tire has seated correctly, make sure we don't have a load of sealant splurging out. It's all right to see a few little specks as it seals up, that's normal. That is a job well done. So, um, okay, so thoughts of that compared to using a separate track pump and uh, charging canister, uh, this is a lot easier. Um, no messing around, trying to attach it to something else. Uh, this was really easy, just, uh, you know, flip this switch, charge it up, flip it back and boom, up it goes. Um, it worked really, really well with the valve in place. So that second inflation with the valve in place was much, much better than the first. You don't need to then deflate it and reinflate it. So um, that gets a full thumbs up. Excellent solution. Um, feels really robust. So I've no doubt that that will last quite a long time in the turn cycling workshop. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, are you gonna buy a pump like this? Uh, have you been put off getting tubeless because of the faff? Hopefully seeing how easy it was for me to, to get those on and done makes you think it's worth a try. Uh, comment below, uh, what pump would you buy? Are you gonna get this one? And um, yeah, are you gonna go tubeless? If you like it, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get updates whenever I post something new. And hopefully as we come out of the kind of coronavirus lockdown of 2020 and we're getting out and doing more riding and events start up again there'll be more video content coming so apologies for the slow nature of it right uh, that's been great top top marks happy with that right see you later everybody